Hi there. My name is Bobby and Buzz and I are here today to talk to you about Lucid Over-the-Air Update version 2.1.52. This was released yesterday, February 6, 2024, and will be rolling out to all Lucid Airs over the next week or two. So, this had a lot of stuff in it, so I'd like to go over it with you. The first item on the list is Sapphire Torque Vectoring Improvements. I don't have a Sapphire, I'm going to assume that it's going to be handling better as it vectors torque from one of the rear motors on one side to the other one to improve cornering or even acceleration. If you have a Sapphire and you'd like me to test it out to see how it's working, please comment below this video or reach out to me on the lucidowners.com forum and I'll be happy to take your Sapphire for a drive. The second item is range exchange improvements. That range exchange is that wire that allows us to plug our Lucid into another vehicle and take energy from the Lucid battery and put it into the other car. It's going to depend on which end is plugged into which, if it's two Lucids, the donor versus the recipient. And there'll be an interface on your pilot panel showing how much is being transferred at what speed and what's your minimum battery you're allowing the car to get to. I find it transfers at about the rate of a 32 amp charger, so pretty quick transfer of energy. The changes in 2.1.52 are modified battery preconditioning for better power management. Not exactly sure what that means, but hopefully that will allow the range to exchange either faster or make it better for our batteries. We'll see. The next item is something we'll see an immediate change, tire swapping. Many owners who live in colder climates will own two sets of wheels, maybe a set of 19s with mud and snow or winter tires and a set of 21s with summer tires. Here in San Diego, just the summer tires are plenty. But for those owners that have two sets previously, if they wanted to switch over to the other set, they'd have to go to a service center or have a mobile service come to their home and do the software part of the swap so the car knows what wheels and tires it's wearing and can calculate stuff accordingly. Now we can simply go into the pilot panel. The menu used to say tire pressures. That's where we'd see our inflation pressures. And now there'll be another option in order to swap tires over. I'm not sure how this is going to work with TPMS. I don't know if this means that both of those sets of wheels have been previously programmed to the car. That's what I think is going to happen. Or if it can automatically program TPMS, which I don't think is going to happen, but that technology does exist. Time will tell. And I hope if you do have two sets of wheels and you utilize this particular function, you'll make a comment below explaining what your experience was with the TPMS if it hasn't been previously programmed to the car. I'd like to know. Next item, side mirror. Now we're all gonna see a difference right away. And remember, all of our cars are equipped with Dream Drive, which is a suite of safety features. Some cars can option out Dream Drive Pro or Premium, which include the 3D camera displayed on the pilot panel when we want it to be, or when we're reversing. That 3D display will come on, I believe below 16 miles an hour and automatically turn off above. Here's the thing. If we are in reverse and we're backing up, I don't love the way that display displays the exact interface between the wheel and curb. And folks that don't have the Pro or Premium, we don't see that at all. So we're kind of blind to where the rear wheel is related to the curb. Now the passenger side rear view mirror will dip down showing that curb to wheel interface. A couple things I did notice upon trying this. Number one, the position at the dipped position, the lower position, is not programmable. If I go into my mirror settings while it's dipped, I can indeed move it around. Unfortunately, that will affect what it goes back to when it goes to normal position. In other words, it's not independently settable for the mirror dip position. I hope Lucid does include that later, wherein if I'm in reverse, I can take a moment to go into my mirror settings and move the mirror around to get it where I want it, and yet it'll return to the prior setting when it is not in the dipped state. I'm thrilled that we have this, this option now, and it is an option. 
you can go into the settings and click whether you want that on or off, which I love. To me, that's what a luxury car is about, options. I want it. I may not like that idea, or I might love it, and I want to be able to control it and make the car customized to my taste. So thank you, Lucid, for not just making it dip no matter what and giving us that option. One more thing about that. It's kind of going off the script here because I'm not talking about this update, but I'd like to see the blinker mirrors, for those of us that have them, both be turned on when we're in reverse. That way, especially at night and looking in the mirror, doesn't really show me anything because it's dark. I have this really nice camera showing me what I would see there. I'd love that if you could turn those cameras on when the vehicle's in reverse. All right, next item on the list is powertrain changes. Particularly, there are now earlier low power warnings in cold weather. We all know that temperature, ambient temperature does affect range. And if it's super cold out, it can significantly affect range. See, the idea is the car will let us know earlier that the battery is going to be low and give us an opportunity to get where we need to get to charge it. I think this is great. And remember, you know, these cars are made in, in Casa Grande, Arizona, where it's just warm a lot. And so I like that we're listening to our cold weather customers and bringing these changes in. By the same token, we also have some battery management changes. This is that recall. Wait, 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 I gotta jump in here for a moment. I realized that I forgot to talk about the main part of the HV battery management. It looks like we're gonna get a better charging curve and preconditioning performance at low battery levels and also better charging performance during cold temperatures. This is fantastic. There's been a lot of talk on the forum lately about the charging curve, and it looks like we're seeing some improvements here. Alrighty, back to our show. Now I use the word recall almost in air quotes because a recall used to mean that if my car was recalled, I'd have to bring it to a service center and have something physically changed. Well, nowadays, a recall also means I might just need an OTA, an over-the-air software update. I wish we had a different word for that so it wouldn't be quite so dramatic. Oh my gosh, we've been recalled. No, uh, we haven't. We just need an OTA, over-the-air update. In this case, though, this recall is for the functionality of the coolant heater. This can fail or be ineffective. The car, as part of the over-the-air update, will now detect such failure and let us know it's time to go to the service center and get that thing fixed or more likely replaced. I understand that this recall is going to affect less than 2% of cars. We shall see, but there it is. So those that were wondering when we're going to see this so-called recall, it's in 2.1.52. A couple more things. Number one, CarPlay. I'm hoping for Android Auto for my Android using friends, although they're not really as smart as a typical iPhone user, but you know, that doesn't mean they shouldn't have some software functionality, but they have improved CarPlay. I have noticed once in a while, CarPlay will just drop. I don't know if it's because of some sort of in external interference or signal issue, but it'll literally drop out. And sometimes it'll take a while to reconnect. Even if I go into connections and devices and tap that little CarPlay icon, it'll say starting CarPlay for too long. Apparently, by this update, it will now resume CarPlay or do what they call retry behavior more quickly and predictably. This is something also to be seen, and I hope you'll report back in the comments or on the forum your experience with this, particularly if you have a dropout spot that it always, it always happens. Let's go there and see how it behaves. Serious XM improvements. I use Sirius XM through CarPlay, but you can also use it through the native Lucid UI. It'll give every, they'll give everybody a trial period, and then you can sign up for a Sirius XM account and use it on your Lucid. It used to have some trouble with low signal and would drop out. According to the notes in this update, it'll better deal with poor internet connectivity, which I'm not exactly sure what that means, but hopefully that means it won't drop out or it'll have better buffering. And also the Wi-Fi to LTE switching, which is if I'm at home and I'm on Wi-Fi, everything is fine and I can listen to whatever audio program I'm listening to on Sirius XM. When I leave the house and I get outside of the Wi-Fi range, it'll take a while to switch over to LTE. 
and during which the music could drop out. Apparently now, it'll switch over more quickly and predictably. Again, another item that will be remaining to be seen by you folks. And please let me know what you're seeing on this. And the last item, and a favorite item, is other minor updates and improvements. And I'll, I'll read this verbatim. And for the Lucid Owners Forum members, we have added way more robustness. Now, if you have no idea what that means, let me let you in on the little joke. For about six or seven updates, Lucid has used this word robust. More robust this, more robust that. And it became kind of a joke on the forum. And we would say, I hope it's more robust and it must be very robust now. This is the most robust car ever. And what this indicates to me that they saw this joke is that they're listening. They're on the forum. They're having a little fun with it, which I like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video about 2.1.52. Thanks for watching.